Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm just out here in the yard again to respond to some questions, uh, mainly one question. And I just want to open this up with saying in response, uh, if you like any of these other high quality manufacturers, I'm not saying don't purchase their products. Anybody doing a good job, please support them. And if somebody's getting something a little extra out of 3V, that's amazing to me. Uh, I'm not here to disparage other knife companies. I'm here to do comparative tests to illustrate what I'm seeing. And this has been something ongoing since I started this company and to talk about optimizations to that. Uh, I, I don't doubt that there's some fringe circumstances where people are getting a little extra out of CPM 3V. But if you look at the comparative testing with the Boise heat treated Magna Cut and the Peters heat treated Magna Cut, there's similar performance with much different heat treating standards. And that's what I'm here to talk about is bringing the entire industry up by having better base standards. Um, if we look at the old formulation of uh, CPM 3V versus the, the, the prototype sort of concept 3V improvement, that formula seems to fix every little nitpicky thing I have with this formulation of 3V. So to me, I'm trying to bring the, the whole industry up to a higher standard so that, you know, you see these bigger companies starting to use MagnaCut. I, I feel really good now about that because I believe there's going to be a good reasonable durability and good edge holding across the board, no matter what your heat treating standards are. Just using industry standards with different equipment and it, it has good hardenability and good performance across a wide range of circumstances. Now, similarly, when I look at Bowler K90, L Max, M390, things like that, they're already designed for a lot of that fast quench and that more aggressive handling that some of these Gem 1 steels don't like, uh, especially as you get into larger and larger parts. If you go watch my video on uh, steel quality and why that matters, when you start getting into little inconsistencies in the material, the more you stress that out in a rapid quench, the more you're going to see irregular growth, twisting, things like that. And that causes issues. I would rather go back to the root cause of some of these things, sharpen our pencil on the composition, the manufacturing methods, so that there's a more consistent, repeatable result in these materials across the board for everybody. Um, you know, so when you're talking about, uh, you know, Bussy, Bark River, any of these companies, that's awesome. Please support them if you like their designs, you like what they're doing, you believe in those products. I'm not here to say buy my knives or my 3V's best. I'm here to present information. So if you have a knife you wanna send me, I'm happy to do any of the comparative testing, talk about that, and I can, I have a pretty good mind on me. I, I like this stuff. And I can explain probably why something does or does not perform a particular way with a given material. Uh, this is right up my alley. This is, this is why I got into this, and this is all very interesting to me. Uh, the least interesting part to me now has been having to become a manufacturer and now I'm, I, I left factory work to basically come back to factory work now. But uh, we're all quality driven and we're dedicated to this so we just do the job. Uh, it's just back to being a job but when I get opportunities like this, super into it. Um, so when I look at this, I, I'm just going to throw this out here and just show you this has just been an ongoing thing. Uh, I had no input in manufacturing this. I've never sharpened this. Uh, this is a an old Bark River made prototype 3V. I did hit it through one nail this morning just to confirm what I was thinking. Uh, you'll notice in any of my old videos, I never hit steel and hard items because I've always known that's not appropriate use case for this type of material. So if you have a fringe circumstance where at a particular value, it can do a little bit better, that's amazing. Uh, I'm happy for anybody that, that is getting a little extra out of some of these materials. So I'm not here to disparage any other knife company. I'm trying to present comparative data and talk in a transparent manner about material properties. And I'm not doing anything outrageous. I'm, I'm confirming what published data and data sheets are already telling me about these steels. And this is nothing scandalous or salacious. This is just it's, it's just material science and geometries. So there, there's, I'm just trying to demystify that stuff. So when you look at a bussy, I've sharpened tons of bussies for customers over the years, uh, and it's given me a chance to look at them and test them. So in these more efficient geometries, what I noticed is this convex went through uh, one of these nails extremely efficiently, but it was at the loss of some edge here. 
uh, it went through so efficiently that I had zero deformation at the edge or at the spine rather. So, you know, I didn't, I wasn't able to put enough energy in it to make this deform because this failed. It did chop the nail. So all of this stuff is just about energy and geometries. So as I'm going through some of this thicker material, it's requiring more and more energy to get through the material. So that is energy being applied to the spine of this knife that I'm sending straight into this anvil, which is going straight into this concrete surface. The purpose of me doing this was I was trying to limit variables so that I'm sending energy directly into my workpiece or the knife to see what happens. So if you have a bossy or something, historically I've noticed they have a pretty thick edge. So when you're saying it's 18 degrees per side, they're still backed up by a ton of material. So if you want me to design like a nail chopping knife, I can do that and you're gonna have less relative damage at the apex. What I found though over the years is I used to design my knives more similarly to that but they don't function as well as knives. So like I said before, I don't consider this to be a knife task. I'm not saying, hey man, go out and chop nails. That's not a knife task. This is a gross abuse test to illustrate some of the, the strengths and weaknesses of some of these different materials. So uh, I'm just gonna do this because I, I had it on hand. Sean gave it to me um, and it's gonna break my heart a little bit because it's the only prototype I think I've ever had, but uh, I just want to illustrate here, and you can already see, this is an ongoing thing. It just folded. It didn't crush, it folded. And that's that's due to the transverse toughness disparity. It's not magic. So if, if you want me to, you know, I can make knives and create circumstances where these steels look like they do amazing at certain things, or I can just be honest and show you relative information. Uh, and that's what I'm here to do. So if you want me to, test other things, I'm happy to. I consider myself to be very objective. I'm not here to pad anybody's egos, not even my own. So if if something works good or doesn't, I, I'm happy to test it and show you why. Just don't be upset if I break your knife. Um, it's If you send me something, I'm gonna do the same stuff to it. Uh, additionally, I'd like to explain. This hammer's small, but this is a 36 inch or 36 ounce peening hammer. Uh, this has shot in it to create more force, and this is a hardened face for peening. So this is a very, very hard... Hey, sorry about that. Ellie hit a wrong phone button there. But this is a very hard face, and this is meant to send energy into things. I use this in light taps just to use this energy without wearing my arm out all day to do peening. So I use a little carbide peener and just use the, the dead blow energy of that to straighten parts. Uh, out here, I'm taking my dag on day out on it, and that's a lot more energy that I can send into these parts. So um, I'm just gonna show you here real quick, you know, this is a, a more efficient geometry, and this is, this is where I moved away from this because these are hand ground, and I had, uh, through a third party, Bark River flap wheel these things to get a stronger geometry, a stronger cross section on these, and I still wasn't, satisfied with just the, the inconsistencies in the handmade nature. I like to know that my parts are the same so you have the same durability expectation across the board. If you get a 5.1 now or a year from now, it has all the same geometries and properties. And that, you know, the design, the materials, all of that, I'm trying to create consistency so you have a consistent user performance profile that you can count on. Um, so again, I'm just trying to demystify stuff, not telling you to buy my knives or I've got the best materials just know that we hold high ass standards and we're consistent. So I like to stand on data and not this like witchcraft secret processes. Uh, you know, if we have transparent data, I know what to expect and I can, I can trust that and convey that to you in a way. I'm a true believer, but I need to believe. So I'm just gonna, again, do this nail chop test here. So I'm just gonna do this here next to this one. Well, I gotta clear the guard here. So. So again, I'm expecting this to go through here because I'm sending energy into this knife. So whenever you're using a knife and you're doing stuff like batoning, the energy has to go somewhere. So on a concrete backstop, on aluminum, on this, it's either the nail's gonna give or the knife's gonna start giving. Wherever can accept the least amount of energy and yield, it's gonna do that. So hopefully it cuts the nail here, but I know it's gonna cut the nail, but I think we're gonna lose some damage or uh, lose some edge here. So very efficient, but again, it kind of broke and rolled a little bit. 
So it's efficient, it made it through the nail with less, less effort, but that's not a suitable geometry for nail chopping. But it again, it does illustrate the same point I've been making about 3V, it, it tends to roll. So it's a great steel, we've been using this for years, you've seen in all the videos, but it's at that fringe use where some of these things start to rear their ugly head. I'm just gonna do the bigger one here since I've already got three sharp famous last words. Um, yeah, let's, there we go. That's a lot of energy. So yeah, now we've embedded that nail. So I'm gonna pull that out of here, but you know, that's what's going on there. So it folded, it smushed out, and that we're starting to have some failures. So that's a lower geometry there. So again, this is a great performing knife for efficiency, but it's not a, a nail chop thing. And now as I send more energy into it, you're starting to see that deformation at the spine. This is all a matter of energy versus what the physical properties of the materials are. And I'm trying to find materials that are consistent that I can stand on published data to guarantee a result. Uh, when we're, we're doing these really fringe circumstances with these materials to get more and more performance out of it, where it really doesn't want to do that. You know, uh, you start getting into like pseudoscience and you're making, you know, these suppositions and hoping that, that you can repeat this formulation. I like to stand on published data that's been researched by these steel companies to produce something that I can get behind. So I'm not saying 3V is bad or R3 V is better than anything. It's just, there's a particular use case for this and it's not the most appropriate for everything. So when I do look at some of these other materials, they have different values that will withstand this better. So that's all I'm trying to say. So anyway, uh, yeah, that got a little long again, but I hope you can understand what, what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, I'm not trying to, to say that one company's knives are better or not than another company. If you support quality, support quality. Uh, I'm just trying to get away from some of this mass consumerism and this marketing hype so that we can get down to objective information and we know what quality is and isn't. So anyway, uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Uh, I'm going to get in here to work and drink some of my coffee, but you guys have a great day, okay?